little segment we like to call The Claw, because, you know, we all played this game as a kid, right? And Woj reports today the Spurs are fully engaged in trade talks with the Lakers and the Celtics among those teams. Zach, you wrote about a potential Celtics deal for Kawhi recently, and the question you posed is how much should they give up? Should Jalen Brown be in that conversation? If you're Danny Ainge, how many assets are you talking to the Spurs about? That's all depend. Right now, not my best stuff, and certainly not Jalen Brown. I mean, Jalen Brown, you put your best stuff in the deal, A, when you get to look at what Kawhi's medical records say, and B, when you get permission from the Spurs, should you ever get it to talk to Kawhi's people, whoever they are, and gauge his interest in re-signing with you. And if you can't do that, if you can't, or you feel like you can't trust them at their word, or you can't look at those medical files, then you just can't put everything in the pot. It's too risky. You know, I, I did take issue with the idea that this is absolutely going to be the best time. I mean, let's say the Lakers, okay, yeah, let's say the Lakers miss out on one of those two players, right. LeBron and, and Paul George. Mm -hmm. You've got Magic Johnson on the record saying, I'm going to step down if I don't get two. He didn't I, say I'm going to step down if I don't get two. He said, I'm looking at the next two off seasons as a time to get a leap. Oh, I thought he, okay. So he I. He did I, use a player's plural, so. But. Right. And, and so I think, like, I still think there's time for the Spurs. Um, this is really interesting, though, now that, uh, you know, this report that the Lakers are coming in, because what the Spurs need right now is information. How much is Philadelphia willing to part with? How much is Boston willing to part with? Clippers, Cleveland, they need information. And by virtue of the Lakers stepping up, uh, according to reports, uh, and pres presumably putting together their best package, they're going to get information. But don't, I mean, look, I agree with you. There are other windows with the Spurs, and even particular with the Lakers. The Lakers will want Kawhi Leonard in a week, the same way they want him now. I think that's true. But again, if they think that really Kawhi is the key to sealing the deal with LeBron, then they are, quote, trading for a two-for-one, right? They are, quote, trading for both LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard. Now, look, it might not be the smartest thing for the Lakers. It might be that LeBron would sign with them anyway. They don't need this. And so, therefore, they shouldn't strip the team. They could get LeBron anyway. If they do get LeBron anyway, if they do get Paul George anyway, if they get both of them, I, even if they get one of them, I don't see them throwing the entire farm for Kawhi when suddenly they've already had this free agent decision and they think they can get Kawhi next summer. Two variables, and Zach alluded to one of them, that we don't know that are fascinating. The first is his health. The second is where the Spurs peg the, pr uh, peg the probability that they can mend the fence. Do they think there's a 15% chance of mending the fence, a 40% chance of mending the fence? That is going to factor into their decision and their willingness to deal. If they feel like this is done, we, there's, there's, the door has closed, now they become motivated. Why are you that, that, because that's where they are right now. They feel the door is closed, if not all the way closed, and like my daughter's room where we have the little, the little hand that prevents them from right. closing the door. Oh, oh just that much. <laughs> uh, it's almost closed, they think, now. And, and I think really what this could be about, it's, it's like a three-person game of chicken. It's like the scene in the office where they're pointing the fake guns <laughs> at each other. It's, it's not just the Spurs and the Lakers. It's the Spurs and the Lakers and trying to figure out what LeBron is going to do, and specifically the opt-in deadline to, was it tomorrow, tomorrow, night, tomorrow 11 at 11.59 Eastern PM. Because if he Friday opts night. in, life gets more complicated for the Lakers. If he opts out, life is very simple for the Lakers. And I think that there may be some creation of a frenzy around that deadline. And it will be fascinating to see what happens when that deadline happens and what LeBron does. Well, this gets to my point of motivation. If he opts out, he could theoretically re-sign with Cleveland. That's not off the table, but it is less likely, right? So if he opts out, then you sit there and say, okay, if I'm the Lakers, I'm feeling at least decently good. You feel great. If he opts out, you feel great. Right? So that tamps down my frenzy or race to get Kawhi Leonard. My offer to the Spurs might not be as good after that, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's, so, the, like, that, that's, the, that's the game of chicken, and they're trying to figure out what LeBron's plans are, and everyone's trying to figure out what they're doing. It's, it's, it's a really fascinating sort of three-way Right. So, so this whole idea of there isn't pressure on the Spurs, there isn't pressure on the Spurs, but there are boats coming along with different size opportunities for them, and they may or may not know if that boat that passes would be the biggest one, especially if the boat is as big as it is rumored to be 